All right. Welcome to another edition of Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting. I'm your host, DJ Impact, and I got the bad boys here with me. Fellas, it's good to see you again, and it's our three count. This is when we choose just three random stories that kind of popped on the news feed during the week, and we just give our thoughts on uh, what came through. Uh, one of the things that popped up earlier, earlier this week was from uh, sescoops.com uh, that we got from, and this is, uh, and this was titled, titled uh, Update Regarding the WWE Network Moving to Peacock. Uh, I guess that is uh, exciting news for uh, WWE, right? <laughs> and I guess probably NBC as well, right? Um, I guess the whole idea, right, is WWE sold its network over into uh, to the NBC. And now they have their their entire content. Uh, guys, what do you, when you when you heard this happen, um, was you shocked to hear about this? And how, how big is this that seemed like it's going to take place uh, effective uh, about mid March? Uh, what's your take? Um, I, I'll go. Yeah. Um, Honestly, this is massive. Um, the the move to a mainstream streaming network, um, and it's it, it. I didn't think that this would happen, um, mm-hmm. but you know, I was I was looking at some of the terms and just to realize how much money WWE is getting from this deal is obscene. So. Um, looking at, at the numbers, uh, it, it equated down to being about a thousand dollars that NBC universal was paying, um, per subscriber over the five-year period, they were paying a thousand dollars to WWE for each subscriber currently on the network. Wow. Yeah. It's insane. So the whole idea now is that we're going to have WWE content Mm -hmm. along with NBC shows all on this particular platform. Yeah. And 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 for, and for, in most cases, cheaper than the network. Mm. I mean, you can, you can get the model for five bucks with ads. If you're willing to watch commercials. Yeah. If you're willing to watch commercials, it's $5. Mm -hmm. And you get, you get, you get the WWE network and the office and everything else. It's pretty fucking awesome for consumers. Um, the uh, the other thing that you know really can't go unstated is um, they had just brought WWE had just brought in Nick Khan as uh, the president and chief revenue officer back in August, and he's already to he's already able to land this deal. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that Nick Khan has a position for life with WWE. <laughs> um, the uh, some people are actually even speculating that. Uh, this move is the is the beginning of something bigger. Um, some people are even speculating that this could be viewed in the future as a bit of a down payment on purchasing the company itself. Mm. So wow. Well, I did hear, I did read somewhere that uh, when he joined, he immediately started on this deal. Yep. Like that was his yeah. job was to go right after this. So this yeah. has got to be. He's he, he's got a job for life. He's he's set. Yeah, the um the the biggest thing here is the fact that Bam's contract is up. So when that ends, that's when this new deal starts. Mm. The 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 truth of the matter is that um, Bam is so Bam is the one who set up major league baseball network the the streaming okay. service okay the, mm-hmm. the mlb live um which is a great streaming service and you know they obviously have to pay a lot of attention to that contract bam then also got disney so mm. disney being a newer client and a bigger client actually made you know if you think about it the WWE kind of become not secondary, but third dairy now 
because Disney's like top priority, Major League Baseball's second, and mm-hmm. WWE's third. So they weren't necessarily. I I can I can tell from just the way my network has worked over the last, I'd say probably year, maybe year and a half since they did the new fucking update, which was absolutely fucking dreadful. You can't watch stuff like if you watch one episode of Raw, the next one's supposed to play when you have the mode on for continuous play. There's, I mean, there's times that it doesn't fucking do that. It just mm-hmm. stops. There's other issues with the playback and stuff like that. And apparently it's not a priority for them to fix. <laughs> so um, I think that they probably started shopping. The other thing too is the two executives who really were behind the network um they were let go during the furlough in 2020 Mm -hmm. so bringing in the new guy i think that it was made a priority to him (laughs) like we're hiring you this is your first and foremost fucking priority yeah so and i think that a couple factors you know if you think about it this is one of the really, really, really weird, odd opportunities that we're getting now with streaming services that Fox's product now in SmackDown will be on NBC's streaming service. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so That's you can crazy. see now the, the, the lines are starting to fucking blur. And we're going to see this more and more until essentially – Disney owns the fucking world. I'm assuming yeah. they'll be the, the winners of all this. Um, but, you know, you've got Fox, who's owned by Disney. So Disney kind of wins there. If Steve's indications are correct, it could lean towards maybe even Disney picking them up. Or it could lean towards Universal NBC picking them up, um, which in turn would lead to them always having some network to be on whether it's usa for the rest of their you know their existence um hell you could probably even take one of your shitty networks that is a a real low grade network and just make it a television fucking you know version of a wwe network um so there's a lot of opportunities here. Very, very smart deal. Very, very, um, you know, it's funny that there's all this hype about ratings. This just goes to show one more time. Ratings do not fucking matter. This mm-hmm. is it. I mean, when you have a company that's built up like this, the you know, the, the, the revenue that you've shown through the history of your company basically shows and the universal or, or USA, you know, tie in um, they've been working with NBC slash universal now for a good, what, 30 years, almost mm-hmm. or whatever it's been through that whole process of U- USA turning over and they're being bought up by different companies. So um, I just think it's a smart move because you do realize who this con guy is. He's actually, um, he's a cousin of Danny or of uh, Tony Khan. And um, basically um, he's, you know, it's, it's a power play. They hired him to bring him in and just destroy W by bringing in a con. <laughs> it, it was the perfect con job. <laughs> Let me let me ask you this right quick, uh, Simon Street. I did hear that. Um, see, that's why for guys who's listening to this on the uh, on the podcast, you know, we're sitting back laughing. So it's kind of difficult for you to see when these comments are made like that. We're just sitting that busting up. So you got to sometimes tune in on the video so you can kind of see us just, you know, looking at this fool Michael's for saying the stuff he says. Okay. <laughs> if you're not watching you're missing out you're missing out okay especially looking but, uh, at simon street and <laughs> looking at him to see his mind's going okay is it bullshit or is it true no i'm not, I'm just not i'm just watching you do your art Continue. let me let me ask you this 
<laughs> Let me ask you though, Simon Street. I did hear that one thing about the new, um, uh, I guess, Peacock system they have is that um, they, I guess one thing we enjoy with WWE is when they have their live pay-per-views, uh, you are able to stop, uh, rewind, play back, all that in the middle during that segment. But their system at the moment isn't set up for you to do that. So you literally have to watch the pay-per-view live. There's no going back. There's no... Now, that feature could eventually come, but they don't have it now. How important do you think uh, that feature is? Uh, or do you think, like uh, Michaels had mentioned, where there were other... Uh, issues that the, uh, that WWE just never cared about fixing. Do you think NBC might be the same way and go, hey, fuck it, they just need to watch it live. They don't need to have the option of playing back, stopping this, or starting over. Can I, can I clarify what you just said then, just to let you know for sure? Um, okay. It wasn't WWE who didn't want to fix those issues. Oh, okay. It's BAM. It was the, the, the service provider Sorry for about that. the, the okay. network. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay. Uh, still back to you, Simon. Do you think this would be an issue that uh, NBC would want to fix because they don't have that feature that the network has now? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's in my opinion, you would definitely want to uh, really have that conversation now because it looks like, for all intents and purposes, when WrestleMania gets here, we're going to be watching it on Peacock. Mm -hmm. And um, I can tell you right now, with so many eyes that's on there, different time zones. Mm -hmm. uh different countries i'm as well no this only takes place in uh, in america so let me correct that so this is okay. only for i think everybody else is still going to utilize whatever system they're going to have but for america if i live in you know new york you know what i'm saying i'm going to be waiting to, well no it's no it's still the same thing let me retract all that only i was going to say is i would like it because there's a lot of people who have to work sometimes and you know, sometimes I would not want to watch it live. There's certain pay-per-views to where I'm like, shit, I missed the first half an hour. Let me mm -hmm. just watch it from the beginning and then I'll just be late when it finishes. But right, well, uh, they would definitely want to go ahead and think about adding that. But I don't know. I mean, it's a good deal. You got to remember too, the NBC Sports uh, station is shutting down. So if they do retain the contract for NHL, um, plus whatever other sports that they still have contracts for, then you're pretty much going to be forced into a situation where you have to update your system so that you can, you know, forward rewind and, um, you know, start in the middle of a game or, you know, start from the beginning of a game. I think um, the more, basically what you're seeing here is, mm -hmm. NBC just threw down the gauntlet and basically is starting on their existing streaming service, their sports network. That's essentially what you're looking at. So, and you got to think about it in the terms of, well, why would they do that? Well, ESPN plus is part of the Disney plus package. And if you really want to get fucking confusing and blur the lines, mm -hmm. so is Hulu. And yeah. Hulu has a lot of the NBC shows contracted, mm -hmm. you know, in which that's starting to change now too because of Peacock. So um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time to say the least. But one key thing here is that for $9.99 now, mm -hmm. now you get commercial free not only the network but also peacock so you can watch jim and pam in their office habitat and go through their romance <laughs> right commercial free for only 9.99 what was that price again steve 9.99 <laughs> well the cool thing is too if, if you're heartbroken recently because the office left netflix uh and you happen to be a wrestling fan you really didn't lose you just you just go, go to a different streaming platform so i'm yeah. happy because i was a little pissed off at first when i heard the office was leaving netflix that's my go-to when i need to go to sleep and i'm drunk but is but isn't hell <laughs> you're real put that on or you know <laughs> but in a, but in, their shows are also on Hulu, correct? Some of them. Some some of the oh. contracts. The same thing with Netflix. Netflix has certain shows that you're going to see on Hulu, um, even Disney Plus. But they have a contract with them. You know, it's all confusing for me because I just realized that you still pay for cable. 
leave me alone. Hulu, <laughs> Disney Plus, and ESPN has this deal for like 12 bucks, right? Here's the problem. I, I pay the one year in advance for Disney. So I have that to whenever, whenever they started last year, what was it, June, whatever. So I have that. But then I also play for Hulu. I pay for the $5.99. So I have that with commercials. I want to jump on this whole Hulu, Hulu, Disney, ESPN deal, but I'm already paid for the Disney year in advance. So it's one of those things where I'm like, well, do I should just wait till after that's over before I jump? I'm, I guess what I'm saying is all these things are becoming confusing. They are becoming better that they are joining because you're having a lot of good options. But once you're in the middle of one of these contracts or whatever your billing cycles, it's just sometimes hard to figure where you where you jump in to start. Have you tried um, contacting anyone about that? No. I just realized it this past weekend that all three of them yeah. <laughs> were connected. You know, I, so I, I would, pay separately for them. I would look I would look into it because That's there cool. should be a way they can uh, they can rec- rectify the situation for you and you know, maybe uh, figure out how you pay the difference or whatever. Mhm. There's supposed to be a bundle. Yeah. Now see, there's a whole now see you impact. You wouldn't have to worry about that at all. If you had Verizon, because you get that with Verizon. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let me I'm, not think of he, he, yeah. he got his mute. Don't worry guys. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? He does kind of make a point because you know, even with T-Mobile, they pay for my Netflix. So it's like if if let's say T-Mobile picked up another let's say they picked up Peacock and they said hey we want to pay for your Peacock wait wait wait, yeah. wait whoa, whoa, whoa. hold on time out time out time out wait T-Mobile pays for Netflix right that's yeah. what I'm about to say yeah my T-Mobile pays for my Netflix do you have multiple lines family lines or something like yeah. that oh yeah I mean well I mean I got a daughter you know to pay for no her. no no I that no that answered but is that, that answered a fair, the question is that a forever deal or is it like for a special. No, it's, it's a forever deal. They basically pay um, up to uh, the, so it's, four, I think it's just turned up to seventeen ninety nine. So they pay literally like more than 80% of what the bill is. So whatever the basic Ooh. is. Yeah. I mean, and I didn't know about it until I uh, changed my plan to but something. You, else. I don't know if it's because I have multiple lines. I don't know that. Yeah. You have to have a family uh, plan. Is that what it is? Okay. Then that makes okay. sense. But yeah, I, I I have the seventeen thirty nine, but they keep paying for almost eighty percent of that bill. So I only let me ask you guys right quick because I know you got up to the other story. Um, this might not even matter, but in this uh, SE Scoops article, it did talk about that the WWE Network employees were blindsided by this deal. Now, this might not even be something that they Damn didn't yeah. really need to know about, but let's just read it and, and see what your thoughts on it. It did say that. In this letter below, it says, myself and my team were completely bulldozed by the press release about Peacock streaming rights to the WWE Network in the US, noting a wrestler observer source within the WWE Network. Quote, we just had an an all employee meeting last week and there was zero indication that this would be happening. And while I'm here, I have also heard internally that they're pointing the fingers at social media for the poor ratings, end quote. What's your take on that? Um, I mean, should uh, does it matter if WWE should the net should the network employees should have known about this deal, or you just find out when they decide to want to tell you about it? Adam Pierce found out that his job got fired this last last night while he was sitting on the couch. Why couldn't it be the same for everybody else? <laughs> it's a joke, man. It, 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 I don't think that they care. I really. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it's business. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's unfortunate business, and it it sucks that we have to say it like that and and that we have to legitimize it but at the end of the day they don't care we're all we're all just numbers on a balance sheet for who we work our shoot jobs for sure well you you gotta think of this too the source is coming from the wrestling observer we don't know who the source within the company was um if in fact the companies were quote unquote blindsided by it there was nothing that said the employees um uh were working in what capacity of the network right so if you got digitizers if you got guys who program etc etc 
there's a lot of jobs that they're just they're not going to lose those jobs most likely because NBC is not going to hire their guys to do that work. It, it just picks up their, uh, they just pick up the, the contract. Maybe they become NBC employees, but um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, it, listen, it smells like, uh, you know, again, a source who at this point, it could still be Terry Taylor, even though he hasn't worked for the company for, <laughs> how many years dave probably gotcha. still goes oh terry i'll listen to what you gotta say <laughs> give it to me man give me the sugar well let's go over to the second count uh this was from ringside news and um it's titled eric bischoff believes pro wrestlers should be allowed to use steroids now i didn't get a chance to the the link for this uh site it isn't working but i i read pretty much the article beforehand and from what i was reading uh, Eric was pretty much saying that uh, steroids should be used because I guess in many ways it, it shows to be something that is positive, that can help people who actually do need them. If they are prescribed by a doctor, it's something that could um, help a person doing whatever they may be going through and even may prolong some of their, their life. With that, knowing that information, he thinks that it should be something that should be allowed um, in wrestling, and specifically, of course, WWE, who have their wellness program and randomly check those to see, uh, if, you know, if they are using any any of those particular drugs and things. So I'm just kind of curious uh, of your thoughts. Again, we weren't able to uh, quote exactly, but just what you know about steroids itself and how it's just kind of been, um, we've heard about so many things over the past from those wrestlers who we've lost in the past. And, and, and granted, you know, we don't know in what capacity they were using that, were doctors administering that or were they doing that themselves or, or how much they were doing or what. But based on what you hear, do you guys think that if, if it is true that steroids is something that could be positive in someone's life and a doctor thinks it's something that, that can help one, and it's, you know, do you think that is, should that be something that could be used by wrestlers and not something that they get penalized for? Uh, what would be your take on that? Didn't they already, uh, uh, I mean, do, don't they already allow steroids in a capacity uh, to a certain degree, like cortisol, uh, like, uh, cortisone? That, that's a type of steroid that, that helps with infl- and inflammation. So, I mean, I would assume that they allow that. So these tests, I think the big question is, do the tests, need to be looked at to include other types of steroids that aid with body repair. I think the steroids that were in question for the longest time were obviously commercial use steroids and body enhancement. Mm, mm-hmm. It's just not, not every steroid is, 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 is the same in definition, at least, you know. Well, I don't think he's, I don't think he's saying it should expand to testing for that. I think what he's saying is there shouldn't be any testing in terms of if you are using something that is prescribed by a doctor, which I'm totally fine. My stance on steroids period is um, not going in my body. So I don't give a fuck if you put it in your body. Right. Um, And whether that's, you know, sports, entertainment, whatever, you know, I'm not Mm -hmm. the one who's sticking it into me. Um, Yes. Is it frustrating for people who, you know, go the clean way? Sure. But at the same time, Bischoff's, one of his uh, things he said in this article Mm -hmm. was the fact that actors do it all the time for, you know, gaining 30 pounds. Um, (laughs) The Rock, look at The Rock. If you look at him in different films, he physically changes because Mm -hmm. sometimes he's gassing a little bit more. Sometimes he's working out a little bit more where he's cutting weight. Um. Sylvester Stallone got popped in uh, Australia, I think it was, uh, I don't know, about five, ten years ago in that time frame uh, for having uh, anabolic steroids on him. Um, and it was like a big like like gasp, like, oh, my God, nothing ever came of it. Um, actors do it all the time. It's done, you know, usually under the um, the eye of some kind of doctor. Um the reason that they have to have a doctor and this is what becomes interesting about this theory 
if a person signs on to a film, so if The Rock's doing, you know, another Jumanji, mm-hmm. the studio has to have insurance on them. And to have that insurance, they have to pass a physical. Mm-hmm. So for them to be doing some kind of steroids, it can only be administered by a doctor because if it was found that the actor, you know, died because of, you know, overdoing on steroids and his heart got enlarged or something like that, um, they won't get the insurance payout. Mm-hmm. So that's the whole thing. Um, I don't know if, if you made it legal. I don't know if Vince, the WWE in general, I don't know if they have anything right now that is an insurance on the wrestlers, especially something that would cover to that extent. Um, What also makes it difficult here is the reason essentially that there was a steroid policy in place was because it goes back almost 30 years to the uh, trial that Vince was part of. Mm-hmm. and they were trying to you know bust him for uh, distributing steroids um and then to make things worse you had chris benoit and mm-hmm. at that point the media ran with this whole idea because certain wrestlers had passed away within the last you know 10 years uh before benoit that it was really the steroids that did this when in truth it was more so taking shots to your head that scrambled your brain like football players deal with. Right. So what you're looking at is that that drug policy was really tightened up around that time to make up for their bad PR. The biggest thing here is that in general, unless the WWE is doing it under specific doctors and insurance companies, then technically it's illegal. Why is it illegal? And why is that insurance, you know, why is that um, policy in place for WWE to drug test? It was simply due to the fact that what was happening in the days of the 90s when steroid use was really rampant was Mm -hmm. that guys were getting prescriptions from doctors and then they were you know getting way more product um than they should have been getting and um i don't know man i it's just it's a lot trickier than simply you know like bishop said that it can extend their their um their life sometimes right it's like well yeah sure if you're maintaining an injury that you had through steroids mm-hmm. but if you're going out there and you were performing every fucking night the way that these guys used to do it was a to help you keep your body in shape b to keep you looking good because you need to earn the spot and everything was about keeping your spot plus those guys were doing coke and alcohol <laughs> <laughs> like a regular right. fucking basis. Yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of a weird, almost non point, but um, hey, I'd love to see more guys gassed up if, in fact, that they had no problem using it themselves and the company didn't have a problem with it, then fine. That's your choice. San City, you have anything you want to add on this? Uh, yeah. I mean, realistically, um, I don't, I don't think that there's any real, um way for for us to legislate this kind of thing i mean it's it is what it is we have to stand with how it is right now personally for me i again looking at wrestling as not a competitive sport but as a simulation Mm -hmm. it it doesn't factor in um if if they want to do that then that let fine whatever um, as long as WWE is not administering it or, you know, providing it to them, that kind of thing. Um, because ultimately they're not, they're not competing, like shoot competing with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's where a lot of fans, you know, they, they look at it and it, it occurs to them that, Hey, you know, well, I don't want them doing this. Why? Because they're going to win more matches. Well, 
they don't decide who wins the matches <laughs> you know it, it's decided for them yeah so it for me it's it's like that i mean they're not competing for anything if they want to let them but um i think the advancements that we've seen in concussion technology and detection and prevention um will will be what actually prevents there being another situation like what there was with benoit and the other thing too really quick if you think mm -hmm. about it after the steroid trial when you had guys like hogan and, and the ultimate warrior then vince all of a sudden was going to guys like sean and brett austin then you get the rock okay and then you get hunter and then you get brock lesnar and then you get cena and then you you get batista and you just go come on yeah. right come on man it's still there it's still there but it's very very limited yep in the way it's used now got you I'm surprised you didn't say Jinder Mahal. Well, <laughs> I kind of forget he works for them. Yeah. <laughs> that happens. All right, we'll jump over to our third count. Last one. Um, this one is from whatsculture.com. It's titled, WWE wrestlers disagree with the Undertaker's sh shoot comments on Joe Rogan experience. Now, uh, this happened uh, sometime about a week and a half ago. Um, I'll just kind of read a little bit on what uh, Taker said and then uh, just kind of mention those that had some uh, objections to that. Uh, the first thing he says on the show is that it's tough right now. This is Undertaker speaking. It's tough right now for me to enjoy the product because the product has changed so much and it's kind of soft. I'll probably piss a lot of people off, but they need to hear it. It is what it is. He also goes down and says, that era of guys, too, those were men. You go to a dressing room nowadays, it's a lot different. I remember walking into my first real dressing room, and I saw some crusty fucking men, right? Like half of them had guns and knives in their bags. And, you know, shit got handled back then. Now you walk in, you know, there are guys playing video games and fucking, you know, making sure they look pretty. It's evolution, I guess. I don't know what it is, but I just prefer, I don't know. I just like those era, man, those, those eras, man. I like that when men were men. Now, of course, when he made that statement, man, that caused a firestorm. Uh, Joey Janela has some words. Xavier Woods, okay, this guy, he plays video games. Drew McIntyre had some words. Hey, Roman said he believed he misspoke. How about that? And Mick Foley went to his Twitter and said, no, he think these men are, are definitely um, men and tough. Uh, what's your guys take on, on, on what Taker say? I mean, um, do you understand what Taker was saying? And because, hey, we all, of course, we were never in these locker rooms, but of course we grew up in during the attitude era from the things we saw there to, to how we see things now and it's night and day you could kind of understand kind of where he's coming from, but uh, do you think he was right on or do you think he was off? Do you think like Roman says he misspoke or do you think Taker was right on it and it is what it is? I definitely don't think he misspoke. Um, okay. I, I, think, I think he said what he said and he meant what he meant and vice versa, you know, said what he meant, meant what mm -hmm. he said. Um, it's ultimately, you know, we are living in a different, a different world now than what we were in when they were running shop back in the attitude era. Um, things change, mm -hmm. life changes, life changes people. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the most important thing is being able to adapt to those changes and be able to even, um, you know, anticipate them. And when they happen, revitalize yourself. Right. Yeah. So, and unfortunately, it, it appears that, you know, for better or for worse, that he's not happy with the status of the product. Um, and I'm not saying that he's that he's not adapting or anything of that nature, but we all have preferences. We all have things that we like. We all have, you know, pain points with with the shows. Yeah. Um, 
we're all able and entitled to our opinions and we're able to express those opinions. Yeah. Um, so that's all that he was doing. And you can't really fault him for voicing his opinion the way that he did. Simon Street, I mean, hey, man, you like playing video games. I mean, uh, I would think that you're very uh, manly and, and not uh, soft. Um, I don't know. When you, when you hear his comments like this, um, do, would you understand where Joey Janela, Xavier Woods, Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, Mick Foley, you, would you understand where they're coming from? Or would you still have to side with Taker on this? Uh, I mean, there's always truth to almost everything. There's some truth. To almost everything, and I think that his 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 statement did ring true in two points in my mind. Number one, the era that he grew up in, um, times were different, just as Sin City Steve just said. Mm -hmm. But I think also too, you have to realize what it means to be tough is more than just being masculine. And I think that in this time in this age, that is displayed differently. Um, not to say that you know somebody that's like a Stone Cold Steve Austin that comes in with broken glass and ready to stun everybody and get a couple of beers isn't just as masculine as someone that plays video games, but handles business in that ring or wherever in life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I side a little bit with how Roman said it. I think that he misspoke. I do think that that is something that even outside of the undertaker, many men in his age have had that conversation even about the ring outside. It, it's, it's no secret. You know, th there's a large amount of men who coordinate their ensemble when they wake up in the morning, that of what women have traditionally done. And that doesn't take away with how tough they are and how much grit they may have. They just happen to do it a little bit, a little bit flashy, but playing video games and whatnot should never really determine whether someone's tough or not. It's situations that they're in. And that part that Undertaker did say, there are some times where not just anybody can do a hardcore match. You see what I'm saying? And in, 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 for me, there are certain people that if you told me you're in a hardcore match, okay, this person is totally the embodiment of tough, regardless if, you know, they have coordinating shirts and sweaters and shoes, or if they're just, you know, had knives in their, their bags with, with guns, you know, uh, I think he just misspoke, you know, mm -hmm. everybody has an opinion. I still love the undertaker. I think even when I was reading many of those, uh, those, those tweets and responses, um, they, they didn't really seem so much anger behind it because I think they all love The Undertaker. Um, I hope he gets an opportunity to kind of, you know, set the record straight of what he probably meant. Maybe more context, maybe. I don't know. You know, Matt Michaels, uh, and part of what Roman Reigns said is, you know, hey, man, you can't go through TSA with guns and knives you're gonna get you're gonna get hit but you know let's let's be real i mean interestingly enough that's nowadays i'm sure those days first off most of those guys probably wasn't even flying you know you were driving from town to town mm -hmm. you were you were standing in probably some shady spots that uh you know you just trying to get a cheap room because you're trying to make a dollar it's definitely a different time what would you say about this would you agree with what taker says or you will point you know look at uh, agree with some of these other wrestlers uh had to uh say against that so first things first, you're absolutely right in terms of travel. Mm -hmm. Specifically in Undertaker's comment, Mark says, when I was first starting out, mm -hmm. when he was first starting out, he was wrestling in the South and he <laughs> traveled by car, just <laughs> like everyone else did in the territories. Mm -hmm. um, from all uh, accounts, back then, like Harley Race probably showered with a gun on. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Like, so what I think that it's kind of getting blurred here um, is the comments being interpreted as their wrestling skill set. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that some of the guys were interpreting it as because we play video games, we're soft in the ring. I don't think he's saying that at all. What he's saying is the culture that he grew up in was very, very, um, I guess the best way to put it is who's got the bigger cock, right? Everyone is fucking just, you know, you're going to show you that they're the fucking boss, right? You don't fuck mm -hmm. with me. Everyone was out. Listen, 
Brody got fucking murdered in Mexico, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, damn straight in the late 80s, early 90s, a lot of guys are probably protecting themselves mm-hmm. because of that high exposure of that type of thing. Um, you're also forgetting the fact that back then, fans would try to shiv you, try to shoot you, try to hit you with batteries and, and acid and all types of shit, man. They'd fucking mm-hmm. slash your tires if they knew your car, if you were here. Mm-hmm. So in some ways, you're talking about the thickness of skin and how it is in a locker room. And I think what he's saying is that that was the culture of how it was for him, right? And the Undertaker was a locker room leader. So therefore, basically, I think what he gets to is that he became a leader because of the toughness of everyone else around him right Mm -hmm. that that made him stuff up his game so that he was you know he was um someone that would earn respect and that was all really what you're talking about i think nowadays in the locker room respect kind of uh can be earned by guys having you know huge contracts or you know other things and the fact of the matter is is that we don't know if mark would have been playing video games if today's technology was back then and if the locker rooms were like that when he got into the business you know yeah so really it's it's literally a generational gap um and you know he's he says this about you know being tough and etc well i'm sure too that there were numerous people that he came up with uh or that were already established when he was around getting into locker room that probably used uh, some very colorful language to describe black people and Mexicans and, you know, right. and gay mm-hmm. people. Listen, Pat Patterson, man, you know, you talk about a, a, a gay man who had to keep that closeted for most of his career because within your own locker room, you could be, you know, fucking attacked for being a gay man. Yeah. So there is a lot more that goes into that. And dude, you know, everyone fucking tries to make their own headlines by pulling out that shit. Yeah. Do I think he needs to apologize or whatnot? No, he's Mark Calloway. He's the fucking undertaker. <laughs> right. What are you going to, you know? Right. So he was really aware. He was aware he's going to get flack from it. So yeah. Yeah. He, let's put it this way. He is one of the smartest guys he's just breaking the cave fave now mm-hmm. and the thing is is that he knows damn straight that anything he says people are going to listen to so mm-hmm. you know whether it it was misunderstood well that might just be part of the guys just not again getting that culture knowing that you know not knowing that he doesn't necessarily get that culture and whatnot but I don't think anyone would literally take it as to the point of um, cancel Undertaker. <laughs> right. You know, I would hope not. Yeah. yeah. We just got him talking. I don't want him to stop talking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Long time. Please show me, show me that toughness and just be, look, I said what I said. I'm not going to apologize. It's how I feel. I'm not persecuting nobody. It's just my opinion because I love hearing the Undertaker talk about stories. This well, is the first time account shit he's been telling us. And you, you brought up a really interesting f- factor, and that is, you know, there are only a handful of people that can seriously, um, whether it be maybe CBS Sports, Sports Illustrated, 
um not espn because espn was butt sore over the uh <laughs> the deal with peacock <laughs> so espn's not giving them a good press anymore but legitimate reporters who could actually have an interview with the undertaker to ask him that follow-up without having mark to just come out and do it on his own right so technically mark really doesn't have to say anything because the thing that you know even though it was joe rogan and it's mainstream the only one this is really affecting is those people around the industry, fans, people in the business, etc. So if you don't have even like a real news source, then you're not going to have reporters shoving microphones in his face. Tell us why you said this. Yeah. You know, and then right. I, I, I want to see the reporter who has the balls to go up to The Undertaker right. and say why did you say this <laughs> it's only one person that can actually ask that question and that's stone cold steve austin on next time he comes on the podcast if stone cold's the only person that can ask him that yeah i i mean i would say that that stone cold and just a very small amount of people can actually ask that otherwise you know again it's it's kind of one of those stories that because it was on joe rogan's show a lot of people did listen to it. You yeah. know, if it wasn't The Undertaker and it wasn't Joe Rogan's show, if it was, you know, Ricky Tenacious on this show saying something, <laughs> you know, um, Ricky, and whatever. <laughs> but uh, from our uh, comments, uh, Mike commented, he said, uh, they're a little bit of, a little bit of, quote, okay, boomer, end quote, with the Taker's comments. But I think there's a different world now with technology, how to pass the time, et cetera. So yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. And, and listen too, uh, the other thing that we know about someone like Mark that we don't even have to listen to him talk to understand, he was a biker guy. So a lot of his spare time, and he probably was reading about bikes and fix, fixing motorcycles and you know doing that kind of shit you know, in his spare time. So he probably never got into Grand Theft Auto, you know? Right. You, you know what? Um, you make a good point, uh, Matt Michaels, because when you think of passing the time, what's different is when you hear a lot of the wrestlers that, you know, from Mark Calloway's time, a little bit further, their spare time after, like, like if they wrestled somewhere, they were at a bar drinking. And that's how they spent the time. A lot of these younger cats nowadays are doing what I'm doing. We unwind, you know, play video games and whatnot. I guarantee these guys are drinking a lot less mm-hmm. than, you, you know, you know what they did, you know, a long time ago. And like I said, it's just the world and the scenery has changed. Um, well, and the other, it, the other really quick, the other difference too, is if you want to bring up video games, you do understand that Andre the fucking giant, if you want to look to locker room leaders and guys who really respect it, all Andre did was literally play cards and yeah. drink, you know, a fucking bar full of alcohol. But but they played cards, man. Patterson, Andre, the the whole. I think a lot of the uh, the Bones crew, um, you know, Godfather and and Savio and those guys. I think they actually got to know each other because they played cards all the time. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, real quick before we move on, uh, this rarely ever happens, Impact. And since he's Steve, you may have not caught it. Matt Michaels was actually wrong with some facts. And I just want to take an opportunity to correct it. What? You said <laughs> Brody died in Mexico or was murdered in Mexico. That's incorrect. He was murdered in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Died in, in Puerto Rico. So I just wanted to correct you. It rarely ever happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know what? Uh, going back to the whole... Uh, comment about guns and knives i would tell you that i know that the wrestlers also have to go through metal detectors just as people who come to, into the arena have to go into there so you you're not walking in there with just <laughs> uh, a bag full of ammunition you're going to get caught before you go you get in so that has changed as well um yeah. but yeah. i think that and, and that was a poor choice on his words yeah because i think everyone's focusing on this like guns and knives equal yeah. toughness Right. It's just the truth of the matter is that um, that is what you found in that generation. If you go into the locker room now, the question is, 
how do you determine the toughness? And to be quite honest, it's in the ring, you know? I mean, hey, look, you know, one thing we, we kept talking about was the video games, but he also said that, um, you know, he's also mentioned that people were making sure they look pretty. You know, there was a time where, you know, most guys we watched, it looked like they just, you know, came from home, walked in and went right to the ring. <laughs> You know, nowadays the guys are not like they got all made up, hair all wet and ready, and they, you know, just ready to come out like they're ready to shoot a, a some sort of a model pose or something. So, uh, but that still doesn't mean that they're not manly, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? and, and what's what's really fascinating about that is the fact of the matter is, look at it. if you go back to when Taker started and was wrestling through the years. Yeah, yeah, there's there was a lot of beautiful people. I, let's just take The Rock for fucking sake. You don't tell me that Rocky didn't take a couple looks in the mirror to make sure his eyebrow was going up right, you know, before he walked through the curtain. Exactly. That dude was wearing fucking silk right. shirts, yeah, you know, and and shit like that. So yeah, I I think that that is again what it comes down to too is you're dealing with a guy who was born and raised in Texas mm -hmm. and a lot of the perceptions that he learned growing up through the, um, the seventies into his, you know, teenage and 20 years in, into the, um, the eighties was, you know, a lot of uh, perspective now that is not looked at as very, you know, opening to, you know, whatever it might be, whether it is, like I said, you know, a lot of those guys were racist. A lot of those guys were homophobes. Right. And by God, I would never want to accuse the undertaker of being such, but that line of thinking of what tough was versus what is tough is considered today yeah. is probably, you know, along the lines of what Roman said is he might've missed, you know, he might've misspoken, but in all honesty, right. he didn't misspeak. It's just this is the the way that he speaks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's pretty hey. funny too. Is 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 the last commercial the Undertaker was in? He was playing a video game with his uh, <laughs> for the uh, that, that wrestling <laughs> game. <laughs> I'm just I'm laughing because I mean, and and then I I say this: Kevin Owens he plays video games, and that's a tough sob. You know what I'm saying? Big E plays video games. He's a tough SOB. Well, we know Big E looks in the mirror before he walks out, man. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. He's primp, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, good stuff, guys. We had a really good conversation on our three count tonight. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we're going to go right into our final thoughts uh, for tonight, and uh, we'll go from there. So, Simon Street, what you want to tell the folks out there? Uh, you know what? Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for uh, giving us an opportunity to, you know, do our thing. And if you're entertained, you know, tell tell a friend, you know, how much you're entertained and invite them to uh, share the happiness that we provide for you every uh, Sunday. And so we can keep growing. Uh, other than that, everybody be safe out there uh, and, you know, be good to one another as best you can. No doubt. Uh, City City. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with us um, in the chats, uh, your messages, your likes, all that stuff is awesome. We do this mm -hmm. for you. So um, thank you to uh, everybody that also popped into the chat tonight. Um, mm -hmm. We're there. I'm going to be there every pay-per-view going forward. Um, so I don't want to make any, any, you know, bookings for the other guys, but uh, we'll try to be in the chat room for every WWE show, uh, every WWE pay-per-view. Um so yeah, come in, hang out with us. Uh, it's a good time. Um, also, um, thank you to um, all of the brave men and women serving our country on lands, both foreign and domestic. Um, thank you so much for everything that you do. And uh, also last but not least, repsports.com. Go there for all of your pre-workout, weight loss, energy needs, and uh, rep sports r-e-p-p -P sports.com use promo code vegas at checkout and save yourself 15 percent. perfect and just so you guys know when he talks about being in the chat that is through our app so uh if you have your ios or apple phone or your android phone just go to your app store put in vegas bad boys with a z to separate vegas and bad boys 
you'll see the app pop up, download it, it's a free app. Uh, it just allows you just to kind of keep up with our, our, pack, our podcast. But we also have real-time chats in the air and we got different rooms you can go into. And if you just want to let off some steam on something you saw on TV, just uh, go in there and let it off. You never know when we would be in there too, just to, uh, to let off some steam as well. We were on the chat tonight during the Royal Rumble. It was great. We had quite a few people to, to come in and, and, um, and say a few things. So download the app. It's free. It's definitely um, something that, um, that we want you guys to do just to uh, be close with us. Uh, Matt Michaels, final thoughts. Yeah, if I'm the uh, WWE, um, I go 100% behind the uh, Ric Flair and Lacey storyline. Give me a sex tape, please. (laughs) I want to know what the Nate has at 71 years old that Lacey (laughs) finds so enticing. Um, So, hey, you know, um, I I remember there was a a GTV... uh, surveillance and then there was a uh surveillance by some guy who might have been mustafa or not uh ali or not so uh you know if you just happen to have one of those uh, or even better wwe please please just send a cameraman to a hotel room with them and have the camera there like filming like it's a backstage segue and uh you know and maybe I know he doesn't work for them, but uh, Marvez can maybe walk into the bedroom and try to interview them while they're having sex. <laughs> I know he's the robe on the whole time. Yeah. It was, it was funny because King tonight was kept saying, you know, I don't know why Charlotte is just being disrespectful to her dad. <laughs> King is awesome. He's the ultimate uh, heel commentary still. He still knows how to to sell it well. Yeah, um, yeah. especially talking about the <laughs> cuddle calling the pot black. Exactly. Jerry's girlfriends are probably <laughs> yeah, right. way younger than uh, Lacey. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, exactly. You know, ain't, ain't no hate on that at all, man. If you, if, if you of age, man, shout out to all the men that's 50 plus with uh, young 30 year old girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, hey, also, if you want to uh, donate in any way, feel free to do that. If you got the cash app, our tag line is just Vegas Bad Boys with a Z. You can send anything you want, a dollar, 10 bucks, 100 bucks. We're just going to take that money you send and help promote uh, Vegas Bad Boys uh, to, all throughout the world so they can get a chance to enjoy the same thing that uh, you enjoy when you listen to us. So it really helps us and uh, we appreciate you for, uh, for definitely downloading, uh, watching us live uh, or sending in Cash App or downloading the app. Uh, all those things are for you. We really do appreciate it. We wanna thank everybody for listening tonight. Uh, don't forget that uh, the Falco Files is on uh, Wednesday and every Friday we have a different uh, wrestler, someone you may know or may not know but if you don't know them, it's a good chance to get to know them because they're working their ways up into the industry. With that, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Peace.